And I've now got the great, great pleasure to introduce uh, Merle lederman Euculus. We have actually communicated before and already when we were working on the Manifesto Marathon, we were incredibly inspired by her Manifesto for Maintenance Art. Merle is an artist. She is madly in love with the public domain and public culture seen as the area where everyone, truly everyone, can be inside the picture, which ties in also very much with what actually Adam Curtis said in an interview today about the public sphere. Her Manifesto for Maintenance Art from 1969 is still operative today. Since 1977, when she became the official unsalaried artist in residence at the New York City Department of Sanitation, a position which she actually still holds, Euclid has created art that deals with the endless maintenance and service workers that keep the city alive. Tonight, Merle presents Transfer and Exchange, a proposal for one million participants to participate in an artwork for Fresh Kills Park in New York City. Public offerings made by all redeemed by all. The project is very much inspired by the Fresh Kills landfill in Staten Island that after 50 years contains 150 million tons of New Yorkers waste. The site is now being redeveloped as a park, but Euclid believes that the land will never truly be transformed unless a large number of the people who created the landfill actively and personally engage in its renewal. A very, very warm welcome to Merle Lederman Euclid. Hello. I'm very, very happy to be here. I have been, can you hear me okay in the back? Can you? Yes. Thank you. I have been obsessed with Fresh Kills for over 30 years. Fresh Kills in Staten Island, New York City, is at 2,200 acres, almost three times the size of New York City's Central Park. It consists of a cluster of four mounds called North, East, South, and West. It was the biggest municipal landfill in the world, reputedly visible from outer space. That operated for 50 years until it was closed and ceased to receive garbage in March 2001. Its unique constructed topography is stuffed to the gills with environmental complexities. But Fresh Kills also bewitches because of how it acts as the navel within the body of its contiguous surroundings. New Jersey, oil tank farms to the west, the fossil fuel basis of Western civilization. The Staten Island Mall to the east, a temple of rampant cons consumerism. Buy, 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 throw out, throw out, throw out. Imagine lobbing the material across the street from mall to landfill and watching the mound rise right before your eyes. You can see the effects of your consumerism growing in front of your face. <laughs> this, this, the, the West Mound it itself is one mile long. Crisscrossing the site, a nature preserve, the remains of the original site's wetlands with navigable creeks and abundant wetlands and wildlife. Fast-growing housing developments verging north and south. And buried under the top of the largest east-west mound, the haunting remains of the World Trade Center. My connection to Fresh Kills has been ongoing 
since the late 1970s when as New York City Department of Sanitation's artists in residence, I proposed making public urban earthworks at New York City landfills, public earthworks you own and can visit by public transportation without having to fly to Utah or Nevada and often hiring a private airplane. My connection has deepened since 1989 when I was awarded a Percent for Art Commission as the Sanitation Fresh Kills Artist. Some of my guiding principles for Fresh Kills Park since 2000. Fresh Kills Park can be a symbol of our power to create transformation of the land. Fresh Kills Park needs to reconnect to all of those who made it in the first place, a renewed social sculpture. Transparency, transformation can be visible and clear. This is an early work from a show called Garbage Out Front, A New Era of Public Design, a show I curated in 1990 for the Municipal Arts Society in New York City. This piece is called Landfill Cross Section, an 18-foot detail of my own 36-foot high relief installation in the marble staircase, showing two scenarios of the law one with geosynthetics and one with heavier materials. Both use real regulatory materials, real soils, clay, and PVC pipes that are at one-to-one -one scale, except for the cell of garbage, which would be about 50 feet deep. I just didn't have the room. <clears throat> I wanted to make the USA environmental regulations for legal landfills visible. Here are a few images from my six-channel video artwork called Penetration and Transparency Morphed <clears throat> from 2000 to 2002. Excerpts of this six-channel work were recently shown in London at the exhibition Dirt, the Filthy Reality of Everyday Life at the Welcome Collection. Here is a flock of old barges. Every designer who sees them wants to keep them. An example of one of the many big scale, heavy duty drainage structures throughout the site. Some images from the biggest leachate treatment plant in the world. I think it looks like the Red Sea. Here's the final cleaning tank before the water is released into the Arthur Kill. This is regulatory clean water. We are walking on the just completed gas fields among the grid of gas mining infrastructure. This is what used to be the classic view from the top of one of the mounds, the Empire State Building and the World Trade Center. Shot, this piece was shot in August 2001 one month before 9-11. Professor Neil Kirkwood from Harvard's Graduate School of Design, one of the pathfinder subjects in my video artwork, standing on top of the mound, pointing to this scene, asks, referring to Manhattan's huge size with millions of people, is that an annex of this or is this, the huge volume of the city's waste at this site, an annex to that? One month later, tragically, both postulates came true. With the material debris remains, however you call them, from the World Trade Center attack, first being sorted and then buried on the top of Fresh Kill's West Mound, forming a tragic layer to the future park. But please remember, World Trade Center materials occupies only 50 acres out of the 2,200 acre site.
Here is my proposal for a transgenerational public artwork that engages the entire 2200 acre site. It's titled Proposal for One Million People to Participate in an Artwork for Fresh Kills Park. Public offerings made by all, redeemed by all. It is in the New York City Draft Master Plan for Fresh Kills Park, published by the city in March 2006. It is, as they say, as yet unfunded. Two pictures, the battle days in the 70s, Fresh Kills, and the beginning in 2005 of sanitation's remediation construction. The logic of this proposal, over 50 years, millions of people in New York City threw out over 150 million tons of garbage that was sent to Fresh Kills. This created the mounds at Fresh Kills it is truly a social sculpture. On this official Department of Sanitation map, here are all the streets of the city, everyone, so that sanitation can find everyone to remove and dispose of their garbage and recyclables. Sanitation knows where everyone is. It is possible to make an artwork with one million people in the context of such a system that knows how to deal with eight million people every single day. I propose to create a system that piggybacks onto sanitation's phenomenal urban operations expertise. I see sanitation as New York City's rejected urban materials flow system the artwork will mirror this system in order to create a do-over to redeem the effects of the flow of the city's rejected materials on the land. A question arises about the meaning of site and place. Imagine a site in a place where people live and work called Staten Island which over the course of 50 years becomes a receptacle for the garbage of the whole city. One borough receives the material rejections of all five boroughs. The site has risen and grown into four mounds. Now we can ask, to whom do these mounds belong? If you drive by or fly over, there are those mounds. Certainly they are in Staten Island, but when you stand there, when you are standing on them, are you standing on Staten Island? You are actually standing mostly on Manhattan, on the Bronx, Brooklyn, and Queens. These other boroughs have colonized this expanse of Staten Island below the surface. Are you on the ground? Whose ground? Each citizen living, working in, or passing through all over New York City made this place between 1951 and 2001. It is their place, the place of each one of them. It belongs to each one. Another question, what is the meaning of garbage, of the garbage that makes this place? At the beginning, garbage was differentiated material, objects that were originally desired and became acquired. In our culture, desire rules. Our culture says, once my desire for you is slaked, I who possessed you don't want you anymore. You therefore lose your characteristics along with your value. Wet and dry, light and heavy, greasy and fluffy, a mattress, a leaf, and pills all become the same thing, it. It 
becomes the rejected. It, released, moves into a state of being abject. Every single object cast away moves into a flux of disavowal. As we strip it of its qualities and names, we switch its meaning, garbage. The switch is an act of social collusion and grand distortion. How has Fresh Kills come about? Through billions of individual decisions by possessors to reject. Then, as the hand releases the material object, the object becomes unnamed. The proposed project, how does a place whose contents are composed by this collusive practice switch its meaning and become something else? What mind-blowing bad karma is lingering? How can we start to approach forgiveness for what we did to the land? I include myself in this we here as a longtime resident of New York City. I believe that regardless of how beautiful a landscape Fresh Kills becomes on the surface, and it will, this site cannot be healed and transformed into something else unless many, many of us who made it actively and personally attempt to redeem and renew this land. We must redeem it purposefully. We are material beings, though spiritually endowed, who live in an urban world of material flows. It is our power to change the meaning of material. Why one million participants to create this work? This is the minimum minimal relationship of scales between this cultural effort and the mass of original material rejections. This is how it can happen. Donor citizens are invited to create something of great personal value or to select something of great personal value. I call these public offerings. These material objects must fit into the size of the possessing hand. These offerings are voluntarily released from private ownership. Yes, but they are not rejected. Their value stays with them, even though no longer individually owned. This is the opposite of what we call garbage. They are not abject. Rather, their value stays with them they are released to be shared in community, to be embedded as markers for fresh kills, to indicate that this place filled with rejections has changed. The individually made offerings are gathered and, and transferred into this project through a network of what I call cultural transfer stations all over the city. These public sites of meeting will become workshops prepared to receive offerings from each hand that offers. Where are the cultural transfer stations? Some examples, city-owned museums that have workshop spaces, such as the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Bronx, Brooklyn, and Queens Museum. Sanitation facilities can also become cultural transfer stations, such as this old marine transfer station, a commitment to consider sanitation facilities cultural transfer stations was offered by the current sanitation commissioner. After release by the donor citizen, each offering is photo documented, registered, then embedded in a transparent recycled glass block. The block becomes a permanent housing for the offering. A new relationship is formed between the donor citizen and the city through the process of release and acceptance, then transfer and exchange. This new relationship between city and citizen is symbolized by a unique barcode given as a receipt to each donor. It becomes a repository of decodable information about the creator's identity, location, 
and the meaning the creator confers on the material. As well, the barcode receipt is the access key for entry to a global public web archive that will locate the coordinates of each offering at the site when the site becomes ready, no, many how, no, no matter how many years from now this happens. Here is an example of an offering embedded in a recycled glass block. The barcode engraved in the glass as a major component of the art reveals the name, if wished, the intention of the donor citizen and his her location in New York City. The barcode will enable generations afterward to locate these individual ma material markers to explore the site on special expeditions to find them and on, upon discovery to comprehend and appreciate their significance for their creators. Say I inherit a barcode from my great-grandfather. I use it decades after his passing to locate and to discover his offering and also his spirit. Or my uncle at home in Brazil identifies the same offering on the web archive and establishes a new connection to his grandfather and to me. Thus, the people who originally made and degraded this land through acts of material rejection and alienation can now redeem it by creating personal material and intentional connections of value to bind each individually to this new site beyond any single designer made by a million people to redeem this land. And in this expanding generosity of spirit, we can each become enabled, all of us, to be bound to this site in the future. The healing act of release without rejection into an abject flux confers the power that an individual can seek and create forgiveness for what we do to the land. Eventually, these glass blocks will become edges of miles of paths and retaining walls throughout the 2,200-acre Fresh Kills Parkland. Together, these glass blocks will become a distinct, differentiated layer kissing the surface. The new material layer is in utter opposition to the living multitudes of garbage layers beneath where material differentiation and characteristics have been erased, but whose costs for remediating their degrading impacts on the elements of air, earth, and water will continue for decades. This new layer, now entering the public domain, will become a huge flow force garden, revealing new respect respect for an individual's intention, respect for material, even though released from private ownership, respect, even reverence for this renewed land on which it is planted. This new city land garden can be treasured. My goal is to keep the individual's free voice audible within a public work of mass urban culture that is relevant for the scale of sites like Fresh Kills, which represents the results of living in vast numbers in concentrated cities.